finally, we're getting ray tracing on our phones. NVIDIA is gonna start paying attention to Linux and Microsoft made an oopsie and said something they shouldn't have. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your host, Brett. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news that I can find on the internet by starting with recapping a little bit more about AMD's Computex, Computex keynote that they had on May 31st. We discussed a lot in yesterday's episode of Hot News when it comes to their next generation CPUs and the current generation GPUs, as well as their APUs. But one of the things we didn't cover was the fact that they say that they are bringing not only variable rate shading to their phones, but also Ray tracing. This is in partnership with Samsung on the upcoming Exynos SOC. This is a pretty big deal, especially since we're expecting that these chips are likely going to be faster than the current best chips that are out on the phone market, such as from Qualcomm or from Apple, which this would make it so that it's not just faster in regular stuff, but it's also faster in ray tracing. I would guess that you'd imagine like the RTX 2080 Ti stuffed into a phone. Not comparative performance but just like the fact that the 2080 Ti was better than the 5700 XT, but it also had ray tracing. This analogy is getting a little weird, but ray tracing, variable rate shading, all of these extra features being brought to your phone thanks to AMD making that happen. What game would you like to see ray traced on your phone? For me, it'd be Final Fantasy VIII Remastered on iOS because that's the best game that's ever been made either on mobile or anywhere else. Smashing. AMD also announcing that they are indeed the culprits behind the upcoming gaming computers that are gonna be in the Tesla Model S and Model X refreshes that were supposed to come out in February and still haven't released whatsoever. With Lisa Su saying, we actually have an AMD Ryzen APU powering the infotainment system in both cars, as well as a discrete RDNA 2 based GPU that kicks in when running AAA games. So this means that Tesla is switching from their Intel based MCU setups to AMD AMD completely for the APUs and then throwing in a 10 teraflop GPU when you want to play Cyberpunk or Witcher 3 while you're barreling down the highway at 85 miles an hour. And as long as the cops don't glitch into you like they do in Cyberpunk, you're likely going to be all right. We already knew that this was kind of the case, especially since a block diagram was revealed about this back in January, but it's good to hear that AMD is confirming that they are indeed coming to Tesla. AMD also getting some potential leaks on the render for the upcoming Zen 4 chip. We talked about this in last week's episodes of Hot News that AMD's Ryzen 6000 or 7000, whatever it's gonna be called, is going to be based on LGA instead of PGA, which means instead of having the pins at the bottom of the CPU, they're now going to be on the motherboard and it's gonna have something like 1700 pin contacts. And now we have a render by ExecuFix on the possible looking like of the integrated heat spreader for the next generation AMD chips. It likely will be the same size according to all of the details that are out there, that same square setup, but the IHS being a little different shape, especially to make sure that they can dissipate the heat of what's supposed to be up to 170 watt TDP. AMD potentially bringing the hot and heavy Ryzen Zen 4 chips. I'm looking forward to it, especially again, yesterday's episode of Hot News with them talking about stacking their L3 cache. We're expecting some really good stuff out of AMD, but Intel is not not expecting anything good to be happening in the next couple of years with the CEO of Intel saying that the chip shortage should take a couple of years for the ecosystem to increase output in order to meet demand. So you're just gonna have to wait and it's gonna be bad for a while, friends. And don't you know, Intel knows how to know when things are bad because that's kind of their specialty. That was unnecessarily rude to Intel. I'm sorry, you have a new CEO. I don't wanna, I don't wanna cast too much shade. It's Intel, I'm hoping for the best for you. And Nvidia, finally, after hoping for the best of them showing any love to Linux, is now here with Nvidia announcing with their Computex stuff that they are working with Valve and the Linux gaming community to collaborate to bring Nvidia DLSS to Proton Linux gamers and they will be able to use the dedicated AI cores on GeForce RTX GPUs to boost frame rates for their favorite Windows games running on the Linux operating system with them also saying that they will have support for Vulkan titles coming this month and then DirectX support coming later in the fall. Nvidia giving love to Linux gamers with them supporting more and more technology on that side. You love to see it, my friends. And I don't know if you love to see crypto, but it's time to get into the GameStop Bitcoin update. Wee! 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 
I didn't do it violent enough to make it super fun. Anyways, Bitcoin down 2.4%, $35,900. Just that's, that's absolutely nothing. Ethereum down 3% to 2551. Doge up 3%. Look at that climb. But, that, but that's not the big story of the day. The big story of the day is the meme stonks, okay? GameStop up another 12%. Almost hit 250, L landed there. It almost stuck the 250 landing. It's up a little bit in after hours. Game stunk, taking off. AMC also just growing 22% on the day, up to $31.90. Did you not believe in these shorted stocks? Did you not believe that Wall Street was gonna be taken down by just some people on Wall Street bets? All right, Reddit coming for the hedge fund managers. It's rough, but Sabrent is coming for the Chia plotters by giving them more uh, SSDs to actually be able to plot their Chias. This is something that we've talked about with Chia saying, hey, stop using commercial SSDs to plot for Chia because you're killing your drives. And so Brent comes out with the solution of saying, no, 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 we don't want you to stop. We're gonna give you Plot Ripper SSDs, which by the way, great name, just like AMD's Threadripper, right? They will also have a Plot Ripper Pro, which is going to be good for up to potentially not just 10,000 terabytes written, but on the Pro version, up to 54,000 terabytes written on the two terabyte drive, which is absolutely insane that will last you a long time so Brent just going full in on the mining craze and NASA not going full in on the James Webb telescope the telescope that we've been heavily anticipating to replace the Hubble telescope that was launched the year I was born it's been a while okay I've already aged out of most of my usefulness I can't imagine that the Hubble telescope is still we just I mean it's still giving us really good images I don't want to knock the Hubble telescope it's it's been amazing anyways James Webb telescope was supposed to launch on October 31st which was the latest delay anyways it's been delayed even further until late November or early December at this point maybe by the time my children grow up and our adults will finally have the James Webb in the space sky. My case you want aliens coming to Earth, Crisis Remastered Trilogy can be coming to your systems. It's gonna come out this fall. The entire thing's gonna be remastered. 8K support with all of the ray tracing things that's happening. And what's also happening is Tesla's being dethroned before they can even release their concept car. Rimac announcing their 1,900 horsepower electric hypercar, the Nevera, is going to be absolutely absurdly fast and stunningly beautiful. I love that color on that. Anyways, 120 kilowatt hour battery for 340 miles of range and a 500 kilowatt charging system, as well as that 1900 horsepower quad motor setup to deliver a zero to 60 time of 1.85 seconds. How do you have tires that can do that? That's the crazy thing about here is not breaking traction. The reason Tesla is gonna overcome this is because they're gonna use rocket thrusters that are gonna make it so that you're using propulsion instead of traction on the tires. So I get that explanation, but what tires are they using? How are they getting this 1.85? It's crazy. Anyways, 8.6 second quarter mile and a just very, palpable, tolerable cost of $2.4 million for that hypercar. And it looks, it looks like it, very beautiful. The Tesla Roadster obviously supposed to be the uh, millionaire's sports car, whereas this is gonna be the Deco or Centimillionaire's sports car. The, the Roadster's for the, for the poor millionaires. And getting things right when you announce them is for the other companies. Microsoft announced that they have an exclusive agreement with Dolby for Dolby Vision and Atmos when it comes to games on the Series S and the Series X, and you won't be able to use Dolby Vision or Atmos when it comes to Sony. However, they had to come out and say, uh, that's not true, we don't have that. There's no exclusivity agreement of either tech on Xbox. We're proud to partner with them, but uh, the, there, there's gonna be a general availability of that coming soon, but we didn't mean to be that like we were exclusive, all right? This just reeks of middle schooler saying, hey, you see, she's my girlfriend, and her being like, ew, gross, no, you're not. We're not together. This is not, we're not exclusive, stop. Stop, Steve, stop. We never said we were dating. And I never said AMD's Zen 4 sucks because I don't think it will. And you should watch yesterday's episode of Hot News to find out why AMD's making huge gains in the CPU and GPU department. Go watch yesterday's episode and I'll see you tomorrow, friends. Cheers.